Hi, welcome to the channel. In this video, we'll be doing some data visualization with Python. In particular, we'll be working with histograms. The idea is to show how you can do a histogram with the most popular data visualization libraries. And this is using pandas directly, Seaborn, Matplotlib, Plotly, and Plot9. And I think it's very useful to know how you can use all of these libraries. In some cases, um, maybe you need interactive plots. So in that, in that case, maybe you you should use Plotly. And if you want a very customized plot and very complex, maybe you need to use Matplotlib. So it's, it's useful to know how you can use all of the libraries. Uh, let's get started. So here I'm importing some libraries, the top of the script, and I'm loading some data that has the unemployment rate for nine states. So the first method is using pandas. So here I'm changing the default styling. It looks a little bit better, in my opinion. And this is kind of the most basic histogram you can make, just one variable. And, and yeah, I, I think in practical terms, what you would want to do with this data is to plot a histogram for each state. So that's what we're going to be doing. So there's a way to do this in Pandas. So in Pandas, you can do the f.hist, so the data frame.hist, and we pass the column that has the numeric variable, the unemployment rate in this case, and we pass a column we're grouping by, quote unquote, um, and this is the state. So we get a histogram for each state. And we can also define the number of bins um, for, of each histogram. And as we change the styling of uh, Matplotlib, that is the default backend that's working in Pandas, the, the plots look like this. So otherwise, they'll look a little bit different. For how simple it is, it, it looks pretty decent. But if you want more customization, then let's see what else we can do. So now I'll continue with the Matplotlib version. So here I have yeah the states, states list. Let's take a look at the code now. So here I define the number of columns I want in each in each row. So this is three. So the idea is to think of the this kind of uh, thing as a matrix. So you have a three by three matrix. But in this in this code, you need to define the, the number of columns. So then the number of rows gets calculated automatically. These are mainly, you know, uh, configurations of the the plot, you, the figure size, the subtitle, some spacing between the subplots, and this is mainly where the main uh, magic is happening. So I'm looping here through uh, a counter and the co column name. So these are the states. This is a, a new plot that's being created in each iteration. So what I'm doing here is filtering the data. So the f.query, I do state equals the call, or I could have called this state also. And this is the histogram call. So it looks very similar to this histogram that we did here. Um, I'm using Matplotlib, but I'm using also pandas in a way. And this is the kind of optional. Um, so you could remove this if you want. Um, it's just it's just a histogram, so it's very similar to the version that we had above. Um, but I think it's it shows that you can customize it a lot more. So this is mainly the Matplotlib version. I think it's it's a lot more code. You need to write a lot more code. But if you want something very customized, uh, I think it's a very good option. Then comes Seaborn. So basically, here I have a um, few rows of the data. And this is the code to make the plot. So we set a, this style. Here we have this call of facet grid. And then we do the call of the histogram. So facet grid, what it does, it kind of creates all this kind of matrix structure of the plot. So what we define is the, the variable that we'll be using um, to define each subplot. And we define the number of uh, columns in the in the subplot, and these are some uh, options of the um, yeah of the the scale. So, do we want the x-axis to be shared? Do we want the y-axis to be shared? And I think this is a kind of very good option to have for 
seaborne because it's very easy to change this. And in some, some cases, if you if you use the same scale for all the plots, you, you can't see anything. So it's very useful. This is very, very practical. This is mainly where kind of mapping uh, the, the function, this uh, hist plot function, we're running it over and over again. So here what we have to pass is the, the function name we'll be using in each uh, subplot. We pass the variable, the numeric variable, and these are some optional. Uh, yeah, this is optional, but this is adding a, a kernel density on the plot. So let me show you how this looks. And it looks, uh, it looks nice. I think it's very, uh, yeah, it looks great. And you have this uh, kernel density that it's another way to look at the data. So basically what this summarizes is uh, kind of interpolates the histogram. So, so what's nice of Seaborn is that you don't have to write a lot of code. You don't have to do this loop manually. Um, but at the same time, if you want the plus to be more customized, you will have to fall back to the matplotlib version. But I think in terms of uh, exploratory analysis, this is very useful. Um, okay, and then we have Plotly Express. Let's uh, take a look at the code. So here you have a data frame. You pass the numeric variable in the x axis. You do face it call uh, equal state. That I mean, if you look at the Seaborn code, it's it's the same thing here. Call is the same idea, and face it call wrap just tells you the number of plots you will have in each row. And here you can define a few more options. So hist norm probability is that the area of the histogram is equal to one. And that's kind of the more statistical way of doing the histogram. And, and these are some other options, the number of bins of the bars, and this is the size. So, uh, and, and it looks pretty good. The nice thing is it's interactive, um, but I think it's a, it's a very good library, uh, plotly and yeah, I mean, you get, it, it doesn't cost you a lot more to do it. And it's also interactive, which is uh, sometimes useful if you're building, for example, an interactive web application um, and you've been doing EDA on Plotly, then moving to the application is uh, seamless. You just use the same code, literally. But yeah, I mean, it's not that easy to customize. It's that as difficult. If you want to add a few more annotations and things, it's, it's as difficult as Matplotlib. So you need to keep that in mind. And finally, um, there's this Plot9 package that this is a port of Shishiplot. I think it's very useful. For example, if you're coming from R, you want to use the same code that you were using R. In R, this, is, this will allow you to do it. If you're coming from R, and this is uh, practically the same code you would write in, in R. And so here we have the Shishi plot call where you pass in the data, you define the, the yeah, you map the axis. So X equals the numeric variable. Then we do Xiom histogram and here you can do face it wrap. And this is basically a kind of our way of saying that we'll, we'll be grouping by state. So we'll be doing a histogram conditioned by the state. Um, and here are some other optional options. So the theme, so this is defining the figure size the, and this is, uh, yeah, the X lab and title. So these are optional. So if you're like doing quick plots, you don't need to do all that. Um, and I think this is, um, in terms of simplicity, it's, um, uh, it's great. It's very simple. Um, but I mean, it, it's not necessarily simpler than the other options. Um, but yeah, it, it allows you things, uh, such as, uh, this argument that you can, um, set the y scale to be uh, independent of each plot. So in this case, it doesn't matter much because we have the same amount of rows in each um, histogram, but this is very handy. Um, I mean, Seaborn also supports this, but I find that the way this is shown, it's a little bit clear because you have this kind of title 
of each subplot. Here it's written with text and I mean, yeah, it, it's fine. It, it's, it works the same way, but I perhaps am more used to this. <laughs> um, so I think if, if I would have to learn this from zero, I would focus on uh, Pandas, Seaborn, Matlab, Lib, and Plotly. But if you already know R, maybe you find Plot9 useful because it's a more consistent API. And if you already know Shishiplot, it's practically the same code. But if you're new to Python, I would just ignore Plot9. So yeah, I hope I help you uh, do better histograms in Python. This is uh, all I had for today. Yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, please subscribe and like the video to support the channel. Thank you very much.